Hey everybody, time for another GMG review. Today we're taking a look at Kill Team Commanders from Games Workshop. This is the latest expansion um, for Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team, the skirmish-sized Warhammer 40,000, uh, where you pit squads of little dudes uh, individually against each other in the ruins of some war-torn conflict. Uh, now what this adds, in a nutshell, um, is HQ choices from 40K into Kill Team. Powerful characters, psychers, monsters, the, the action movie heroes um, of your, uh, your Warhammer 40,000 games. Now, are they a little bit over the top? Yes, yes they are. They're absolutely over the top for this scale game and this size board, but that's okay because commanders are being added um, in a very specific way. So let's go through, talk about the high key points, to the five things that you should know about Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team Commanders. Thing number one, um, does this change regular kill team? Do we have to include commanders in uh, Warhammer 40k kill team? And absolutely no, you do not. This is an optional supplement with its own set of scenarios for including commanders, and a scenario will say if it can like include a commander model or not. All of the commander stuff is themed around these characters, and an attempt has been made to balance it so that these are either characters fighting other characters, like an HQ fighting an HQ. Um, it is a, uh, a hunt, you know, so either the hunt or the hunter. So think of like Predator, there's a big powerful monster hunting a squad of guys, or vice versa, there's a squad of elite soldiers uh, hunting down a character trying to assassinate them. Um, that kind of thing. And all the missions are themed around. Just think of your best action movie tropes. I can imagine the development meeting for this was literally name a bunch of action movies <laughs> let's write a scenario around these 10 action movies because I could go through this book basically and go through all I think there's 16 scenarios in here and probably give you a movie where that scenario took place <laughs> there's no Die Hard though he needs more Die Hard he needs, needs more exploding tower if they didn't make a Die Hard scenario I just don't know I just it's no John McClane although you could make a John McClane probably with the guard characters or the Astro Militarum officer so uh, that's thing number one this does not change normal kill team so I don't think you really have to worry about balance in this regard. This is a, a, a side expansion basically for adding commanders. Now, if someone wants to run a mash play event that includes commanders, I'm sure it'll be advertised um, and be its own sort of separate side thing. But while this is an expansion for kill team, it's not required. You're not gonna show up to a kill team game and your opponent's gonna have a commander and you're not gonna know what to do. You're not gonna be able to play um, because this is, this, is a, this is a good communication thing. Everybody agrees and um, you get to basically, you know that this is happening or not happening. So the second thing, what commanders got included? Well, uh, as is tradition so far for Kill Team, um, it seems to be mostly uh, Warhammer 40,000 HQ miniatures available in plastic. Now there's a few exceptions, I think, um, but for the most part, these are, these are what we're looking at here. So plastic miniatures. Um, there are a few notable absences though um, and the most stark and glaring one is going to be uh, in the space marine section which is there are no non-primaris characters apart from the death watch watchmaster every single other character in here is a primaris character now i don't know how some people are going to feel about that well that's a lie i know exactly how some people are going to feel about that on the internet um but what are you going to do? This was the choice. They included only the HQs that were from Primaris. So um, what, what are included from the Primaris? You got a captain, a lieutenant, um, a chaplain, a librarian, all Primaris. Uh, you can also give them the Death Watch key tag, though. So they didn't forget about the Death Watch. Uh, they did include the Watchmaster, though. He's the only little guy Space Marine in here. You go, Watchmaster Mormont. You're the best. Uh, so thanks for that. And also you can give any of the Primaris characters uh, the Death Watch keyword when you choose them and include them in your Death Watch force. Now, every one of the, um, the forces from the main rulebook got an HQ. So don't worry about feeling left out. Everybody got something. <laughs> There's somebody in here for you. The Grand has got a Brotherhood Champion. Um, and uh, again, I'm not going to go through and do all the stats for these guys because it's just the 40K stats. <laughs> it's, man, the point values are crazy different because I think they're trying to account for the fact that you're playing on a 20 by 30 inch or 22 by 30 inch board. You're, you're real close up and personal with some of these characters. So characters that may have been worth far less points in 40k, don't use the 40k point values as a baseline. Um, yeah, like a Broodlord is like as expensive almost as a, a Hive Tyrant. <laughs> but he should be because he's crazy dangerous. Um, the Astro Militarum got a Commissar Lord slash Lord Commissar. Uh, you got Platoon Commanders, Company Commanders. You can take the, the higher, lower level for the Guard. 
Uh, Tempestor Prime, uh, the Mechanicus got a Tech Priest Engine Seer, Tech Priest Dominus. The Heretic Astartes got an Exalted Champion or a Sorcerer. The Death Guard got everything from the starter set. Again, the starter set's a great kill team. Foul Blight Spawn, Tally Man, Biologist Purifier, Putrefier, sorry, not Purifier, and Plague Surgeon. The Thousand Sons got a Zangor Shaman and Exalted Sorcerer. The Azur Yanni, the Eldar, <laughs> Got an Autark, a Warlock, and a Farseer. Those are some of the ones that I, I can't remember if there's... I know there's a plastic Farseer. I don't know if there's a plastic Warlock. It's... There's been so many Warlock and Farseer adventures, because I'm... I mean, it's... Ah, my buddy Christian's been playing Eldar since like the 80s and he has most of those classic miniatures. I can't, it's hard for me to picture because Jess Goodwin sculpted almost all of them. It's hard for me to picture if there's even plastics of those, but I think they might be the exception where it's still in fine cash or something. The Jukari have an Archon. I know that's still in fine cast. Um, and a Succubus and a Homunculus. The Harlequins get a Troop Master, a Shadow Seer, and a Death Jester. Uh, they did not put in the murder machine that is the Solitaire. <laughs> the Necron's got an Overlord and a Cryptek. The Orcs got a War Boss, a Big Mech, and a Pain Boy. Uh, the Talon Par got a Fireblade and an Ethereal. And then the Tyranids got a Prime and a Broodlord. Uh, the Genius Silver Cult's got a Magus, a Primus, a Patriarch, and an Acolyte Iron Sword. Iron Ward. Iron Ward, not Sworn. <laughs> um, and then that is it. Those are our. Our, our, our HQ choices basically out of this book. Now you'll see on the GW website, if you look today, there are of course tons of um, box sets being done individually. I think what that's adding is much like the Kill Team box sets for 40K, you're gonna get specific tokens for your hero. Uh, it's not for 40K, for, for the, the Kill Team factions for Kill Team. You get specific tokens. You do get a generic set of tokens, um, some uh, roster cards for filling out your HQs, as well as all of the specialism, the command, Traits? Specialism? I think it's command traits. They kind of rename them for this, but you get specialists, commander style specialists, basically. Um, so your specialists can pick a specialism in and of themselves. Uh, and you buy them at different levels. So you buy your commanders all at different levels and they have different point values when you buy them. Um, and uh, and so the box sets will allow you to, I think they're just packaging a miniature with the stuff you need to use them as a commander set. I don't know how long those are gonna be around. They might be splashed. So if you do think that you wanna grab one to get the specific tokens or dice or whatever else gubbins come in there um, and the miniature, you probably wanna grab it soon because um, it may be that when they sell it, they sell it. As I'm sure this will stay in the range because you can always get the miniatures elsewhere, but the, the other sort of like stuff might be splash release. So uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but as per usual, go and grab, go and grab them quick if you think they're gonna sell out. Um, so yeah, so that's thing number two, uh, what was included and what wasn't included. So yeah, no Space Marine heroes, um, no like sanctioned psyker, no assassins. Uh, I obviously there's, you know, if there's design space to add anything, this is just insert character from here on out. So anything can be added as a box set later on. But in this big core thing, if you're looking for things like an assassin clade, I think the assassins would have been okay, to be honest with you. They would have been fine. Like I, that, I won't be surprised if that comes in. Um, same with the Primaris Psyker. There's tons of Psykers in here. There's a Zinchin Exalted Sorcerer, and they get their full Psychic Power gamut almost from um, from uh, regular 40k. Like, they know the same stuff <laughs> for the most part. They know different stuff, but they know Psychic Powers, and the Psychic Powers act the same in the Psychic Phase. So, like, yeah, I, it, it feels like there was room to put in Assassins and things, but they don't have a main kill team, so I guess there's not really a faction for them to belong to. Maybe they get to get their own special role where, like, any with the Imperium key tag, any Imperium one could take them as a, a commander or something like that. Um, but they'd be perfect for a lot of the missions, like the assassination mission or uh, tip of the spear, uh, which is a like assault mission. We'll talk about that in a minute, what the missions are like. So there it is, there's what was included and what wasn't included. Uh, yeah, it's basically just mirroring the regular Kill Team book uh, and a mixture of plastics uh, that are currently available, but with some strange emissions. So again, the Imperial, the, the, the Sanction Psyker uh, and all of the Space Marine non-Primaris character types, just, just not in there. <laughs> So thing number three are the three ways to play. Of course there's three ways to play. There is narrative, match play, um, and uh, of course the open play stuff. Um, and the open play missions, I, I'll be honest, all the missions are great because they're all thematic. I, I think the missions were kind of an attempt to balance things here because when you play a commander mission, here's the key thing you want to know about it, is the commander mission tells you who gets a commander, the attacker defender get a commander, um, and how many points you're gonna spend. So some of these missions are for 100 point kill teams, uh, where each side includes a commander, and they can spend up to whole, any number of points on them, basically. Uh, sorry, are 200 point missions where you can spend any number of points on a commander. Some are, for instance, a 100 point mission where one person only gets a commander, and the other side only gets a regular kill team. Um, and as they go through, they'll basically describe at the very beginning what your kill teams can be comprised of. So that is the biggest change, I would say, with commanders. 
in the open play, match play, and narrative play format. You can't just bring a single list to all of these, which would make it interesting if you're gonna do like an event or a match play event, because you need to bring a big collection of miniatures and then be able to deploy it different ways depending upon the mission, because the mission's gonna give you a bunch of your kill team structure. Um, so yeah, so the kill team, so for instance, none shall pass in open play. Uh, it's a mission for two players. Choose which player will be the attacker and defender. Uh, each player chooses a kill team. The defender can include one commander and all their other models can be specials if they wish. And there's no point values for open play either. So you have to just decide what they're gonna be. Uh, heroic last stand, same thing. Um, the defender includes one commander. The attacker includes non-commanders, right? <laughs> and then face off, which has to include the, you know, Nick Cage and uh, what's his name, John Travolta. <laughs> it's, the, it's required, that's what it says. No, it just says it's super players and uh, choose a kill team consisting of one commander. So you each take a commander and fight each other and your commander should be Nicholas Cage and John Travolta. Uh, <laughs> so then we get into the narrative play missions. They have a bit more structure, so cut off the head. Um, it's 200 points, one side includes a commander and, and like regular kill team schlubs, the other side can contain a commander, or sorry, not a commander, um, and just dudes. Uh, the defender must include one commander in their kill team, and that's it. The attacker cannot take a commander because you're trying to assassinate. Authentic eth yeah. Authentication protocols, another narrative play one. Uh, I'm not going to go through the structure for all these, but you're getting the idea. Tip of the spear, a commander assaults a whole bunch of uh, uh, like just regular dudes and tries to kill as many as possible. Extraction, or as I would call it, get to the chopper. Uh, duel of honor, army of one. Like, uh, sorry, we're getting, yeah, these are all still narrative play. Uh, then we get to match play, a meeting of fates. Now the match play ones, just like the match play missions in the regular rule book, um, are up to four player. So they can include two mats, um, and those mats will be, uh, those are mats. I played with mats. Uh, Cardboard board tiles, I guess you'd call them. Cardboards, <laughs> tiles, uh, up to two of the tiles and you play with up to four players. Uh, so you have a meeting of the fates, calms down, hold the line, exemplars of war, uh, all out attack and reclamation raid for your, um, your uh, whatchamacallit, your, your missions. Now, the fourth thing, campaigns, campagons. How do these guys impact campaign play? Um, they're kind of just regular, they have their own table of, of, of damage basically. So, so what happens is they have their own specialisms um, they can take and they have their own um, skills they can learn. They, they typically don't, they don't do, they don't do a lot of leveling up. They're already superheroes basically and you buy them at a level that you're buying them at. So they don't really earn experience the way that your little guys are experienced. If you're looking for like a cool RPG sort of thing from these guys, you're not necessarily gonna get it. <laughs> they just get a different casualty roll basically. Um, not all commanders are created equal. Uh, you can get upgrades for them. They can be dealt out. They've got an upgrade card system that basically in your command traits that can kind of uh, affect that. And then you have your tactics and stuff too that you can play with. Um, so yeah, you have a slightly different casualty roll. So on a one, you take a serious injury, two to three minor injury, four to five contusion, and a six tenths of full recovery. You don't really die. <laughs> the only real restriction for campaigns is you only have one commander on your roster um, uh, of any particular type. So you can't have four Space Marine chaplains or you can't have a bunch of Brotherhood heroes. So that kind of, I guess that kind of benefits armies that can take more commanders than others. Um, and what that means is like the Primaris guy can take four, the, the captain, can take the apothecary, the captain, the librarian, and the lieutenant and the chaplain. So yeah, so you have four potential ones, whereas the Grants only get a Brotherhood champion. So it's like, whereas the Death Watch get five because they get all the space ones plus they get a Watchmaster. So. Yeah, so certain certain armies will have access to more commanders, I guess, on their campaign roster. But again, this is the kind of thing where you're if you're gonna deploy a commander, it's an agreed to thing. Don't worry with your opponent about how balanced it's gonna be. These are missions that are mostly for funsies. <laughs> um, and then of course you have your tactics that you can know too. They get their own specific tactics like heroic intervention, lookout, sir, where someone you just get thrown in front of a bullet, and duel of honor where you can choose to only fight commanders. If you only fight a commander, a commander only fights you, you get to reroll and stuff. Um, and they're worth a CP each as well. And one thing worth noting is if you deploy a commander on the table in a campaign game, you can't take anyone with a leader specialism. So they replace it, they just take charge <laughs> and, start, and start being in charge. Um, so if you do choose to take a specialism for your commander uh, that isn't, like leadership, you might be struck down to one CP per turn. So commanders, they, they have some inbuilt balancing where they do really like their stratagems and stuff, uh, but they don't like, they don't, they, they drain resources really quickly basically to use them. 
Um, the other thing worth noting is psychic powers. Uh, there are six different psychic powers on the table. Any commander psychic can choose to exchange Cybolt, which they would know from the kill team thing, uh, for another power listed here. There's Iron Arm, Forewarning, Fire Shield, Psychic Screech, and Feeble or Misfortune. Um, and you either roll or choose. Uh, what is it? To do so, you can either roll, roll a D6 to generate it or just select a psychic power that you wish them to have as is just like in 40k. I don't know why they say roll if you can just choose. <laughs> then uh, new rules for the games. They've basically standardized deployment method and variable battle length method. So variable battle length is just like in 40k, four turns, uh, a fifth turn on a three plus, a sixth turn on a four plus. And standard deployment is each player rolls 2d6 and the high score has a strategic advantage and that's how you do your round robin deployment. Uh, and the last thing is aura tactics. Certain tactics that have uh, an aura. So like for instance, if you are playing um, you know, regular 40k and you have a captain or something, let's reroll ones to hit. In kill team, that doesn't happen automatically. You have to activate it with a CP. And when you do activate it, you put the aura token next to them to mark that their aura ability is active. So. They don't, <laughs> again, taking a direct translation, yes, most of your characters do exactly what they do in 40k in Kill Team, um, but they interact with the table slightly differently where they have to spend resources to activate some of those abilities for the most part. Um, and that's typically anything that affects another model besides themselves. So when you're looking at the stats, you wanna go into you know, your codexes and check out the stats for all these heroes. You, you look at an ability that just affects them, it's typically just on all the time. If it's an aura ability, you usually have to trigger it with a CP. So I think it says aura tactic, it's a tactic. And it counts as playing a tactic too. Um, yeah, so that's uh, thing number four. Thing number five, I guess, is going to be, what do I think about all this? I think it's fun. Um, I think it's optional. And the, 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 basic, the basic premise here is play with the models you like. And there are a ton of great, cool 40K character models out there that I think are gonna be awesome to be able to play games and kill team with. Does it wreck the balance of kill team? No, because they made it completely optional and if someone's running an event or playing a pickup game, you have to have agreed with your opponent beforehand if you're gonna do this or not. So just like everything else in every miniature game ever made, good communication is the key. If you wanna use commanders, great. If you like using them, great. If you don't like the idea of using them, then just don't. <laughs> uh, and of course, we've tried out the game, uh, put a couple actually right now. And uh, there's one linked right here uh, where you can go and check out a game between uh, the Tyranid Prime, the, was it the, the Hungering Maw or whatever he's called, <laughs> the bad guy, uh, and my kill team 10001 from the Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, and you can see how it goes as he tries to hunt them through the dark. He has, it's gonna be the Army of One mission. It felt like the most iconic one where there's a, there's a monster hunting us in the ruins of uh, Fortis Binary. So and I played a Fortis Binary mission uh, with his Tyranids and my poor, poor Mechanicum as we try and take him down. Um, you, you will find, especially when you start seeing the point values for this, when you pick this expansion up for yourself, they have made it so melee characters are incredible incredibly expensive point wise because melee characters are incredibly good on that small of a table especially if they've great like good solid just like hard stats like toughness and wounds and stuff um and again um that's really it the specials are all pretty much what they say on the bin or on the tin uh, they're you know what they you know you shoot good you go melee good whatever but of course that's uh, all being spoiled right now on the community site so i'm not going to go through all of it i think it's more fun just to watch so you go ahead and watch the game uh, and we'll see you for another book review in the future till next time i'm ash now we're gonna I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Bay Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can. 